all this information and she was so delighted she couldn't believe that she had landed in this place. And it was uh, information from political candidates, it was advocacy information that really let her know the character and the broad diversity that we respected and that we embraced here in our city. Uh, it made me proud to be part of our city when someone comes in with preconceived notions that they have access to this type of advocacy information and that she felt instantly connected with the city because of the information that re she received from the candidates that were freely allowed to, to work in areas around the square. So I, I think that recognizing that this is such an integral part of the subculture of our farmer's market that somehow we have to protect and encourage this type of interaction. Reading this, I know that the intent is not in any way to prevent that from happening, but as we move into the future, it could be interpreted as such depending on, on who and what, and it becomes suddenly, you know, what are the issues that are important maybe to the people at that time, so it becomes more restrictive. So that is my concern, and I did want to mention it because that somehow we need to have this integrated in our policy so that we can protect the very thing that makes our farmers market so special, on Saturdays especially, on the weekends, because I've seen how it is this educational forum that indeed promotes the and the the, the character of our, our our community. So I wanted to mention that first of all, because you do a great job down there. It is recognized as one of the best farmers markets uh, in the United States, and we're very proud of that. Uh, but as we move forward and actually talk about. Uh, the way that this is managed through our city code, uh, I want to be sure that we protect what we have that makes it so special. Thank you. And we're very proud of the fact that there are so many different types of people that attend the farmer's market for so many different reasons, and we are constantly working to keep that balance in check. But that's not something that we want to push completely out of the market or stick in a corner somewhere. It just create that environment at all times. We're very proud that that's part of who we are. And um, in the last year and this year again, we've been um, working to become more of a community partner with some of those nonprofits and, and different city um, entities. Um, this year, Solid Waste is looking at doing an education program at Farmer's Market, things like that. So we want the market to be seen as a community partner as much as a community event. It's not just city functions. It's also the diversity of organizations such as the yeah. Peace Center and the, ex the accessibilities, the, the accessibility of community organizations that are advocacy groups that express the ad advocacy of a broad nature. And so I think that somehow we have to guarantee that there is the respect and the accessibility of a very broad nature uh, in the area, so certainly, I, yeah, solid waste is important, but so are so are advocacy groups. And, and we're um, partnering with some of those groups with Feed Fayetteville last year. Um, we really battled to go back to the other one, uh, food insecurity by donating over 20,000 pounds of produce. Um, Feed Fayetteville was there and active every market. Um, different groups, Boys and Girls Club, things like that. We're doing education programs with them as well as them being able to come to the market and let the community know. Um, and those are just a couple of examples. So I understand where you're at but from a, a policy. Advocacy. Social advocacy yes. is what I'm talking about as much as anything. Mm -hmm. And so that's, that's my concern and that's how I embrace certainly everything that happens down there but I also embrace open exchange of ideas so that we have social issue advocacy regardless. And it, the, the person that's interesting that I mentioned, I think if we ever had an ambassador for Fayetteville, she came back, she said, I met this guy, he sat down and talked me, to me for an hour, and it was Aubrey Shepard. So <laughs> is there any better advocate for what I'm talking about as far as social advocacy, as, so, as far as the uh, diversity that is offered? 
and uh, that's what I want to protect as we move forward. And I know that with the individuals that are there now, you have an earnest desire to protect that, but if we start restricted legislation or restrictive code and we keep going, there's the opportunity for that to be more restricted as we move forward. Yes, go ahead, Matthew. Um, I think we're all on, we're all on the same intent here. Uh, I can appreciate the trust but ver verify approach um, to 